In this segment, you'll learn how to set up and manage classrooms, work areas, and departments. To do so, go to the Configuration menu at the top and choose System. Classroom information is located under the Data Management section, then go to Scheduling. You'll see we have three related sections here, Departments, which are global and apply to all your locations. The department is sort of a high-level category, so for example, you might have a preschool department, but within that, multiple classrooms. Work areas are the next level. Work areas are any place a person might work. This will include the names of things that will be classrooms, but also areas like perhaps a bus depot or the kitchen or the front office that aren't necessarily classrooms. You'll notice this item has a schoolhouse next to it. Items with the schoolhouse are managed one location at a time. And if you need to change that information or set it for an additional school, you can use the Change School button here on the right. Classrooms, then, are the next level down. So classrooms are always chosen from your list of work areas, and classrooms have things like ratios and established start and end times that you can specify. Let's begin at the top level, Departments, and work your way down. So if we double-click on Departments, by default, the program has most common departments that we expect people to have, infants, toddlers, preschool, kindergarten, school age. If there are some of these you never use, for example, you would never use food service maybe, you can delete that department. We'll exit that. Let's take a look at work areas. So these are all the places we have currently defined that people can work. And you'll notice right now they're not assigned to any department. So I probably would want to do that. I would take my infant's room and decide, assign it to the infant's department, toddlers to toddlers, pre-K to pre-K, if I have separate departments for each of those. Or you could lump some of these together under the same department. So before school, I would probably put into the school age department. After school, would probably go into that same school age department. And then blue whales and green turtles are my two preschool rooms. So I'm going to put that under preschool and preschool. So you'll see that how we can combine multiple work areas under a single department, uh, which can help for certain reporting purposes. So we'll go ahead and save that. And if you wanted to reorder this, you can use the green up and down arrow here. So since blue whales and green turtles are preschool rooms, I may want to move them up possibly uh, right after the toddlers section. Let me arrow those up. And on certain lists and things now, they will appear in that order. So now we've got those reordered. We may want to add another work area. For example, one that's not shown here but may be useful is the front office. We may want to assign staff members to work there, but it's not really a classroom. It's a work area. So we'll say front office. And then we can click or tab over to the department. And in this case, that would probably go to the administration department. Click Save. And that's at the bottom of the list. I could use the arrows to reposition it if needed. And we'll exit. OK, next let's take a look at classrooms. And you'll see that these are all the classrooms we've previously established. If I wanted to add a new one, I'd pick from a list of already established work areas. I don't have any new ones to add because front office is not actually a classroom. So we won't add any new ones at this time. But what I can do is establish ratios. So whatever my ratio might be for children to teachers. So maybe it's four to one in my infant's room. And I might have, depending on how many teachers I have in that room, I might have a maximum of eight students in that room. And for the toddler's room, uh, it might be, maybe it's double that, maybe it's eight, and maybe I have two teachers in there, my max might be 16. And you can go so on down the list. You can also establish in times and out times if it's helpful say for scheduling purpose. So this would save you time later on when scheduling children if most of the times that people go to those rooms, it's at a particular in and out time. So let's say, for example, maybe for my pre-K room, I have an established start time of 8.30. And I'm going to hit the space bar to move over to the 30. And space bar, again, is a quick way to move over. And maybe that program runs until 12.30. I'll do 12, space bar. 30, spacebar, and then type the letter P for PM. So that's an easy way to establish that. I can also reposition these. So again, if I wanted to move uh, my preschool classrooms up a little bit and have them up maybe closer to toddlers, I can do that. 
and save that here. And so that's how to enter basic classroom, work area, and apartment information in ProCare. Now, if you ever needed to delete a classroom, you would first remove it from the classrooms list here by choosing the name. Let's say that I don't have a before school room and I want to get rid of that. I can choose delete. It will take it off this list, but it will still show up as a work area. So then I will have to remember here to go to the work area section and then I can choose before school and I can delete it as a work area as well. If for some reason it's been used and I'm not able to delete it or I don't want to delete it, you could simply come to the work area screen and uncheck it. That will inactivate it, which will mean no one could be assigned to it in the future and children would no longer be able to check in and check out of that inactive work area. And that's what you need to know about departments, work areas, and classrooms.